Hi guys, thanks a lot for joining today's short session on how Cyber Conjure can help you to secure the secrets within Azure AKS environment. So we hear from a lot of our customers that they come and ask us, hey, how Cyber can help them in their multi-cloud or a hybrid cloud journey pertaining to the secret management part. So that's where Conjure plays a very critical role. So today, this short session will be conducted by myself and my colleague Jotan, who will be walking us through the entire GitHub page we have put together, and he will be sharing the demonstration as well. So without further ado, let me kickstart my presentation. So this is the brief agenda uh, we have put together. Again, we are keeping everything simple. If you guys have any kind of equations in terms of the integration, please feel free to reach out to your CyberArk sales team. So in terms of the prerequisites, so there are two main prerequisites. The first one is uh, you should have an Azure uh, active subscription. This is the first part. The second part is the Conjure images. So for this entire demonstration or a lab, so we are leveraging upon 12.2 version. And to obtain these images, there are two different approaches what you can uh, what you can use. You can reach out to the Cyberac support team or you can reach out to the Cyberac sales team to get hold of all these Conjure Enterprise images. In terms of the architecture, so, so there are two big boxes what you can see. So the first big box is, so that's where we are, uh, we are, uh, we have spin up one virtual machine. On this virtual machine, we are running two different containers. The first container is called Conjure Master, or now we call it a leader, Conjure Leader Container. So we have spin off this particular container as a standalone container, as it is just a demonstration environment. But in the actual production environment, you will be spinning off uh, the, the entire cluster, the Conjure cluster, including the leaders and the standbys. The second container is the MySQL database. So my application container will be communicating with this particular database. We, are, we have spin off just like a container, just to save some cost in terms of the resources. And then another big box is that's where we are running a AKS, uh, Azure Kubernetes service. So here we are, uh, we have spin off or we have created two different namespace. The first one is the Conjure follower namespace. In this follower namespace, so we have spin off two follower replicas and then we have created a service and these follower replicas will be communicated with the Conjure master. And then we have created another namespace called application namespace. With the application namespace, so there are two different pods we will spin off. The first pod is like, so that's where we are leveraging upon the CyberArk summon based approach. So with the help of the summon, my application container will be fetching the credentials from the follower and then it will be injected, injected as a environmental variable. And then my application container will be able to communicate with the MySQL database. And the second container is uh, uh, in the second container or the second pod. So we are leveraging upon the secretless broker based approach. The secretless broker approach is considered as the most secure approach because credentials are never ever exposed to your application container. So here, if we see, it's more like a proxy application container will hand over the connection to the secretless broker container and secretless broker container is the one going and uh, going and talk to the follower to fetch the secrets. And after that, it will help the application container to set up a connection with the database. So this is how the architecture is going to look like. And so there are a few things uh, for, the, for the consideration. Uh, so when it comes to the authentication process, so within Azure, there are few authentication process, processes available whenever your virtual machine wants to communicate with the ACR. So they provide a managed identity option. And the second option is uh, leveraging upon a simple username and password based authentication. For this entire demonstration, we are leveraging upon the username and password based authentication. But I believe in the, in the actual production environment, you should be leveraging upon the managed identity based approach as it is considered as the most more secure approach. 
the second thing is uh, the uh, my my containers sitting in the AKS cluster they have to communicate with the with the master or the leaders and the and the MySQL database. So for the name resolution, what we have done, so we will be leveraging upon the Azure private DNS service, and then we will be mapping it with the AKS cluster and the VNets. The last but not the least is so there should be a proper communication happening from the AKS to the to the to the MySQL and the master or the leader container, and uh, you should open up the appropriate network security groups as well. So these are the few considerations. So uh, the, so now uh, it's the time for demonstration. Probably I'll hand it over to Joe. Joe, over to you. Hey guys, for the demonstration, we have prepared a step-by-step -step guide showing the integration between Conjure and AKS. So in this step-by-step -step guide, you will see the architecture that Raj has just gone through. Each step to set up the utilities host, the AKS cluster itself, the database, deployment of a sample application with um, Conjure master and follower deployment. So in this demonstration, we would actually see uh, a sample application that connects to a MySQL database to retrieve and show a random city name, hence the app name city app. So for the first deployment that we have, you will see a hard-coded based city app which encodes the username and password and injects it to the environment variable of the container. For the second deployment, we would see that how we can remove this encoded credentials by using an init container that connects to the Conjure deployment to retrieve the password when the pod starts up. Lastly, you will also see a secretless base deployment that uses a secretless broker to connect to the database. So we have already set up the Conjure implementation in our lab. So there are two key uh, credentials that we will be retrieving from Conjure. The username and password to the MySQL database itself. So in our lab itself, let's just quickly look at the deployments in the Kubernetes. Alright, so the hard code, the summon as well as the secret deployment is running. Let's take a look at how the application looks like. So it's a simple application that actually we connects to the database, the sample world database to retrieve a random city. And for the sake of debugging, uh, we have included the username and password that it used to connect to the database. So for the hard-coded one as seen in the manifest file previously, it would just use the environment variable that is injected in the manifest and connect to the database. Quite similarly for summon, instead of injecting the environment variables, the init container actually retrieves the credentials from Conjure and inject into the application environment, which means the username and password also will be seen by the application itself. To take it one step further to secure the credentials itself, we want to make sure that the credential is not visible to the application at all. So using a Cybox secretless broker, you can ensure that your application will never see the credential and it will just connect to the secretless broker where the secretless broker is the one that is brokering the connection to the MySQL database. So let's take a look at how it will look like if we try to change the password of the MySQL database. Going to log in and change the city app password. So we have changed the password. Let's exit out of this. Let's do a quick refresh of the applications Before that, let's inject the password into Conjure, update the new password. Now let's take a look at how the application behaves after the password is changed. You can see that of course the hard-coded application has error because the password has changed and the password is not working. 
Let's take a look at Summon. Well, what is actually happening here? Summon has also failed. Before we talk about why Summon is not able to connect to MySQL, let's take a look at the behavior for the secretless broker. We can see that the secretless broker still holds the connection very well because it's connecting to the secretless broker. The secretless broker is picking up the new credentials. So for Summon, why has it failed? We look at the manifest file for the Summon. It actually uses an init container for our Conjure K8 client. So if you choose to use Summon, you actually have to restart the deployment before it will pick up the new credentials because the credentials is retrieved when the port starts up. So let's go ahead and restart the deployment for Summon init. Let's confirm that the deployment has started. So you can see that the summon has completed the initialization. Let's refresh the app. So because it's a new deployment, it starts up the new port with a new init container. This time it's able to get the new password. That concludes our de demonstration for the Conjure AKS. Thank you.